Hi, welcome to this Engineering Mechanics tutorial video. In this video I'll go through the solution to a 3D rigid body equilibrium problem. So let's start by reading through the question and trying to understand it and to find out uh, what it is that we're being asked to calculate in this particular problem. So it's in the, the problem statement it says that we have a four member A-frame uh, supported at A and E by smooth collars. Okay, so here we have smooth collars. So here this um, component is free to rotate about this axis, so the x-axis, free to rotate um, but can't move in the x, y or z direction. We're also told that at G, it's supported by a pin. So down here we have a pin connection. And all the other uh, joints are ball and socket joints. So in here, we have connection D and B, where this member here joins these two um, links here. And then where we have this member here, uh, at joint F, we also have ball and socket joint. So in this problem we have uh, the information given that the pin at G, so our pin down here, uh, can stand a maximum force of F max, and we're told that that is 800 newtons. Okay, so that's the maximum allowable reaction force in that pin. So from that we're asked to determine the largest vertical force P that we can apply to the frame over here at C. As well as that, we're asked to also determine the X, Y, Z force components, which member BD, so our this little horizontal link here, BD, uh, the forces that that exerts on the components EC and AC. And we're also told that we can assume that the collars at A and E and the pin at G only uh, exert forces on the members at those locations. So we can um, not include any moment reactions that may be caused by those connections in our free body diagram. So before we start drawing our free body diagram, let's consider the reaction forces that we're going to get at these supports. So up here, we've got uh, a force in the Y direction and a force in the Z direction. And similarly at the connection here. Um, but also we can see that right, this um, hinge, I guess, is constrained from moving in the X direction. So we probably should also have um, an, an indication there of those lateral forces. So in this problem, uh, we're actually asked to work out uh, the maximum load that we can apply here, but we have information about the maximum force that can be carried at this pin connection here. So when we draw our free body diagram, um, we need to choose, well, which member are we going to draw a free body diagram of? Um, so in this case, we'll draw the A-frame here, and because we recognise this force uh, this member here, GF, as a um, two-force member in equilibrium, then we'll know the direction of the force, right, so we can apply that directly to the component BD in our A-frame here. So we'll draw our free body diagram, but what I'm going to do is to look from down the down this direction, down the X direction, and we're just going to look at, treat it essentially as a 2D problem now in the Y and the Z plane. So then we can start drawing on our um, forces that act on our free body diagram. So here at the NC, we have our load P that we want to determine. And then at point F, we have, because we know that uh, the link FG is a two-force member in equilibrium. We know that the force will be acting along the line of action of FG. 
So we can put that in and we'll also have at A E the, the, the reaction forces that we've drawn over here. Okay, so let's put some labels on those. So we have our force P that we're trying to find, our maximum force F max that can be carried by the pin at G, which then gets transmitted through the link FG to the A frame at F. And uh, because this is a, a rigid body problem and we're going to look at moment effects, we need some information about distances. So let's put that on our free body diagram. Uh, let's show our coordinate system. So in this case, it's Y and Z, as we discussed before. And let's then put some labels on our unknown forces at A and E, even though we don't, uh, we're not asked to calculate them in this particular problem. Generally, you would want to know those values. Uh, so I've just put on here uh, some labels for those unknown reaction forces as well. In a rigid body equilibrium problem, typically we'll start with the moment equation. So uh, as we'll see shortly, I'm going to start with moments about uh, the x-axis, so this axis here. Okay, so this would be point A or point E. Um, if we're thinking about it in a 2D equilibrium problem. So what I'm going to do to work out the moment effect of F max is to use its components. So I'll need the vertical and horizontal components. Um, so I'll need the angle in there, which is 45 degrees, because we've got 600 here and 600 here. So that angle is going to be 45 degrees. So we can draw in our components in the y and z directions. So here our vertical component is f max z and the horizontal one f max y. Okay, so let's write our equilibrium equation. So some of the moments about the x-axis uh, that goes through points a and e and anti-clockwise positive all equal to zero. So then we can start writing that moment equation. So we have m uh, f max in the z direction, so that z component here, times its perpendicular distance, which is 600, and it will rotate anti-clockwise around the x-axis. Okay, so it's going to rotate around this way. So that's a positive moment. And then we have the force P acting down this way, tending to rotate clockwise about the x-axis, around clockwise. So that's a negative moment and there's no other forces causing a moment about the x-axis, so that's all equal to zero. And then we can solve for uh, F max, uh, noting that our vertical component here, F max Z, um, from sine 45 um, will be one on root two. So uh, F max over root two is uh, the value of F max in the Z direction. Okay, so times by 600, uh, minus P times 1200, and we can solve for our maximum allowed load P that we can apply, will be F max over two on root two. F max was given as 800, so we can put that in and solve for our allowable load that can be applied at point C, P equals 282.8 newtons. Okay, so the other thing that we were asked to calculate were the forces that um, the member BD exerts on the frame here at uh, B and D. But before I do that, I just want to mention uh, these forces here in the X direction. Um, now they are not necessarily equal to zero. Um, in this particular problem, if you do some of the forces in the x direction, you would have uh, the force here is equal and opposite to the force here. But what that value is, we don't actually know. So that's indeterminate in the x direction. Okay, so to consider uh, the forces that the member BD exerts on the A-frame, we'll draw our free body diagram of that member uh, BD and put on our coordinate system and acting at F will be the force that we've just calculated. So we have uh, F max in the Z direction and F max in the Y direction. And then at um, connections B 
and D, we've got ball and socket joints, and we know that uh, at a ball and socket joint, we only have force reactions, no moments, uh, so we can start putting those reaction forces in. So we have reaction forces in the Y and Z directions. Uh, again, we could um, have a force in the X direction, as we just discussed on the previous free body diagram, or not free body diagram, but the, the, the question diagram. Uh, but again, they would be indeterminate. So the force in the X direction at B would be equal and opposite to the force direction, that the force at D in the X direction. Um, but what value they are, uh, we don't know. Okay, so let's put on the labels on our unknown reactions at B and D. So FBY, FBZ, FDY, FDZ. Now this is a fairly simple problem. Uh, it's just a simply supported beam problem. Uh, so you could say something like, you know, because of symmetry, um, the force FBY must be equal to FDY uh, and therefore must be equal to half F max on root two. Um, I'm just going to work through using the equations of equilibrium um, so that you can see where all that come from. Okay, so uh, start with some of the moments about the z-axis equal to zero, anti-clockwise positive. So we have FDY, so this force up here, times the length to B. So we don't have any lengths given, so um, we could work it out from trigonometry, but let's uh, just label them as D and D because we know that the, the, the distance between D and F and B and F is the same. So we'll just call it D and we'll use that in our equation. So we have F D Y times 2D minus F max over 2 times D equals 0. So then, of course, we can just simply calculate F D Y equals F max over 2 root 2, which is 283 newtons. Okay, so let's, let's now apply the uh, force equilibrium equation. Some of the forces in the y direction equal zero. So we can simply then write FBY, our other unknown force here, is simply F max over root two minus FDY, which we just calculated. So we can solve for FBY also equal to 283. Okay, so we can do a similar thing for the forces in the z direction and uh, if we apply our equation of um, equilibrium uh, for moments and then the force equation for forces in the z direction, we'll end up with the same uh, answers as we got for the y direction forces. So that's not quite the answer um, because we're asked for the force that um, the member BD exerts onto the A-frame, um, AEC. So let's redraw the frame, and of course the forces that are exerted on the frame are equal and opposite to the ones that we've drawn on the member BD. Okay, so we can take these forces here and draw them here on uh, point B for the member ABC, just in the equal and opposite directions. Uh, actually, I've done D at the same time, so here, down to here. Uh, equal and opposite. So FBZ here. So the force that um, the member BD exerts on ABC is this one, and the force that the member ABC exerts on BD is this one here. So um, your equal and opposite um, force reaction um, pairs. So let's put in the, the force one there. Right, so let's uh, finish off by writing our final answers. So we have the maximum force that we can apply at C is 283 newtons, and the force that the uh, member BD exerts on the A-frame, ABC and EDC, uh, 283 newtons also, acting in the direction that we've shown here on the free body diagram for ABC and EDC. Okay, so that's the end of the problem. I uh, hope you found that helpful and uh, good luck with all of your studies in engineering mechanics.